<laughs> I hope I will not say process. We have a problem. Uh -huh. Okay, you tell me when it's on. <laughs> That's not so nice. I think so. It's on though. It is like, yeah. Yeah? Okay. So if it's on, we can begin. Recording, okay. So, um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody, following uh, this session. Uh, this is about uh, mainly about building and renovating in an energy and resource efficient way. I'm very happy to moderate this session because it's something I, I do believe in it. And renovation is recognized as one of the key drivers for Europe's recovery. I would like to quote our president, Mrs. von der Leyen, in her recent State of the Union address, uh, she defined renovation as a lighthouse European project, and it is what it is, alongside electric charging points and hydrogen. So it, it gives you the uh, magnitude of uh, the issue. President von der Leyen highlighted that the construction sector can be turned from a carbon source, it is still there, into a carbon sink if organic building materials and smart technologies are applied. And I do believe strongly in research and innovation in materials. She also mentioned that uh, beside environment, environmental or economic considerations, renovating should be a cultural project for Europe uh, with its own distinct aesthetic to match style with sustainability. So she referred also to the European values. With a view to this, a new European Bauhaus will be set up a co-creation space where architects, artists, students, engineers, uh, like me, designers work together. With regard to the emission reduction target of 55%, which is now our, our objective, President von der Leyen stated that it is ambitious, but achievable and beneficial for Europe. She flagged that, she flagged what is good for the climate is good for business and it's good for us all. And therefore she announced that 30% of next generation's EU, the 750 billion euros would be raised through green bonds and 37% will be spent directly on European Green Deal objectives. So it's a green and digital recovery. The EU recovery strategy, the European Green Deal, the 2003 climate plan, as well as related financial instruments that we are developing, such as Horizon Europe, InvestEU, the Innovation Fund, flag as urgent the need to boost residential and public building renovations to kickstart the EU economy, reduce emissions and energy poverty, and last but not least, make homes healthier while improving energy efficiency. The European Commission will soon finalize its communication on a renovation wave for public and private buildings, including a set of actions to boost renovation and energy performance of buildings across the EU. And uh, moreover, the uh, buildings have a critical importance for people, the place where you live, but it's also a place where you can develop your activities more and more now. And as a citizen, I know how much this economic sector is important for recovery and growth. Research and innovation have a fundamental role in continuously providing innovative solutions that are suitable for the different types of business stocks. To adapt them to the local environment and business, accepting license to final users. This is really important that we it is important. Important advancements have been achieved for the technology. However, reducing emerging 
technologies to the market requires a strong transdisciplinary risk governance as one implementation of partnership conditions and the implementation of robust policies for innovation. You know, I'm sure, how critical it is to deal with existing building and how much innovation it will request on the side of research and innovation because they are existing, so it's causing very specific problem. In this workshop session, of course, we will not rebuild the whole world, but we will all together constitute a broad spectrum of expertise and innovative thinking for having a look to this issue, which is very important for Europe, both for the industry, for growth, and for people, its member states, and the citizen. Article 3 of the Treaty of the European Union state, uh, the, the European Union, sorry, states that the Union's aim is to promote, among others, the well-being of its people. And I'm very keen on that. I quote that in all the speeches I do. Therefore, today, I would like to welcome the key target audience. I'm sure they will pass to us a lot of remarks. We will take care of all of them. Be sure about it. And I would like also to welcome an extraordinary panel. They are in front of me for discussing on building and renovating in an energy and resource efficient way. So first of all, Mrs. Christian Egger, Deputy Manager of the Energy Agency of Upper Austria. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Pavel Podrou, Founder and CEO of Czech Sustainable Houses and uh, IBAT Limited, runner up Mission Innovation Champions. Congratulations really, 2020, and uh, Mr. Paul carter -Vales, Director of, for EU Affairs in WIG Europe and member of the Set Plan Innovation Working Group, Implementation Working Group, Smart Cities and Communities and Energy Efficiency in Building. I think Paul has joined us? No, if Not yet. Come. Paul will join us a little bit later. So, um, the structure of the session we will try to have as much as possible uh, questions and a discussion. So uh, there will be a chat, there will be question and, answer, um, and answers. We will try to pick up the most important or the most supported questions. But anyhow, whatever you put come question, we will record them and we will try to look at them even if it's not during the session. Um, I would like to give the floor first to Mrs. Egert. Mrs. Egger, sorry. The floor is yours, Christian. Ah, petit pro little problem. Yeah. Christian, Good morning. you hear me? <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope. Uh... Thank you. I'll try to start speaking. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. We're having some issues uh, with the now, but hopefully um, will uh, be fixed. So in that case, Christian, I'm, I'm really... So ah, do you hear us now? Are you ready to speak? I cannot not read it. I heard you all the time. 
Uh, Okay, I am unmuted. So uh, we have we are facing connections problems. I suggest maybe uh, that uh, Christian, you try to stop the video. Maybe it will be better without the video. We try without the video. You're reading my message, uh, Piero? In presenters, in presenters. I'm checking it. I'm in presenters. I'm checking the public because people are quite upset now. Yes. Oui, mais ça c'est pas c'est pas admissible. No, Je n'ai pas le contrôle du truc. No, uh, not here. Start. Yes. Could you? We have stopped the videos of all. Is it better now? How can I be in contact with the organizers? That they give by the, the by the chat. Yes. Okay. Um, which speaker do we have? Uh, I am Paul. I'm here. Paul Cartevels is there. Okay, Paul. Yes. I suggest I'm also I... here. I'm also okay. here, I think. The, I hear you well now, Christian. It's working yes. now. So, Christian, Good. begin. Yes, Let's try. thank you. <laughs> Another try. Uh, we, uh, as someone wrote in the chat, we need better interconnection in the renovated buildings. Good morning and thank you for this opportunity. Um, as was said in the introduction, I work for the Regional Energy Agency of Upper Austria. And since a long time, we have worked hard at the transformation of buildings here in our region. We provide free energy advice to homeowners, more than 10,000 face-to-face every year. Uh, 
most of them, 90% are related to an energy related building investment. We have issued or checked 150,000 energy performance certificates for building and we develop um, and support the region in all aspects of the building transformation. We have achieved some good progress here in the region. We managed to decrease GHG emission from buildings by more than 30% in 10 years and 60% of our space heating is from renewables. This is quite good in European comparison. However, in the face of climate neutral buildings, we have significant new challenges that we have to master with technology innovation, social innovation and policy innovation. In preparation of this conference, I've written a small wish list what I hope the next EU innovation programs will bring. Christmas is still a little bit away, but nevertheless, we need deeper multiple insights in the building sector, combining technology, economic analysis, market segmentation, psychology, regulatory, and many more sciences. We have to become much better at integrating all benefits of the energy transition in the in, in decision making. For that, we have to quantify these benefits much better than we currently do. And with that, we can develop new narratives for all actors along the value chain. We may think in our world, renovation is all good, but uh, people still need to be convinced. There are a lot of good reasons in addition to climate protection, but we need to get better at getting this message across. Despite good progress, we are in a dire need of a range of business models, prefabrication, plug and play solutions. We need uh, a new way of bringing policy and market practitioners uh, together with researchers to make sure there's the best possible match of what is being researched uh, and what is needed. Um, that goes hand in hand with a new impetus in the uptake of R&D results. And uh, I hope Europe will be able to live up to its role as a global leader in climate neutralities and buildings have the possibility to be a champion in this process. So, so much from my side for a short introduction. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, I would like as a short introduction too, to give the floor to Paul, who has joined us in uh, this terrible uh, moment of uh, sound leaving, sound coming, video leaving, and so on. Paul, please. The floor is yours. Yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yes, finally, at least we have the sound, which is uh, which is already something excellent. Um, hello to once and once also via YouTube, via YouTube, even if they have nothing to see, unfortunately. Um, so I'm Paul Kartevels. I am the director of uh, EU affairs of Bouygues Europe. For those who don't know, Bouygues is a French company active in construction, telecoms, and media. And to make it really short, because we we, we are started late, um, I'd say that for the construction part at the EU level, uh, Bouygues is chairing the ECTP, European Construction Technology Platform. Mr. Emmanuel Forest is the is the president of ECTP. And uh, we have been a long partner of the Commission in RNI programs, notably with the Energy Efficient Building, PPP in FP7 and Horizon 2020. And now uh, ECTP is one of the construction stakeholders who are participating to the definition of the Built for People Partnership proposal for Horizon Europe, and which is an approach that integrates all aspects of construction. Um, and we hope to make it a green deal ready, of course. I did not hear, unfortunately, the introduction by Hélène, so, so uh, I would say only two things. First of all, we are extremely satisfied that the Commission gave a leading role to the construction sector in the future policies. I think this is really important. Um, but ambition is also, you know, we have to be very careful because the ambitions are huge. I don't know, Hélène, if, if you... Uh, reminded that the Green Deal objectives uh, regarding climate mitigation and, and adaptation and also the environmental objectives on water, on circular economy, on pollution, on biodiversity. Well, if we have to stick to all of this, it is a huge challenge. We have a lot of things to do, but I would say, fortunately, all those words are familiar to the construction sector. Um, 
we have the digital uh, global uh, background and I would like to tell you all that the construction sector can be very digital to the contrary of something that you might have heard uh, in other places. And um, I'll make it short here because we have a lot of questions to answer. So I give the floor back to Helen. Thank you. Did he succeed to reconnect? Uh, Pavel? I, yes, I'm here. Ah, fine. So we, we're listening to your introduction now. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I still hear you as robots. So I'm, I'm guessing every fifth word, but uh, I will try to be understandable. Um, and I will be very quick because we are also running late. Uh, I'm the CEO of iBet.energy, uh, which is actually the, uh, the first real plug and play home battery for vital backup and grid balancing. Uh, currently, we are in a piloting phase in Germany and Czech Republic uh, uh, using artificial intelligence and algorithms to, to trade electricity and make the market more uh, efficient in the end. Um, try to place a, a little decentralized uh, unit into every household uh, eventually. Uh, I'm also a CEO of, uh, of a project called Czech Sustainable Houses, which is an uh, acceleration platform, uh, platform for innovations in energy, materials, uh, water treatment and architecture in general, architecture and design in general. Uh, in the past four or five years, my teams in both projects have received the, the EU Sustainable Energy Award, the, U, the UN Social Development Goals Award, and also the Outstanding Young Sustainability Leaders Award from the Japanese King. Uh, so we are trying our best to, uh, to do our part in terms of research and innovation, uh, especially in the, in the housing segment. Uh, we intentionally do not, re do not receive any state or EU funding. Uh, so we are self-funded and crowdfunded as well. Uh, me personally, I, I actually put money where my mouth is. So I live in a, in a state of the art off grid house, uh, which generates all its electricity from the sun. It's not connected to, connected to any grid. It's like a, a, a innovation laboratory. Uh, and, uh, I, we actually open source the, the whole house and all the technologies that we developed for the house, uh, to the public for free. Um, Thank you for listening. I don't know if you heard me, but um, that's it for me. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Pavel. Uh, I reassure you, at least I hear you very clearly, loud and clear. Okay. Thank uh, you. <laughs> with welcome. Thank you for uh, the introduction. Um, I would like now, um, just using what you said, you are not funded by, uh, by any public fund. Um, we, we know the recovery plan is uh, to help the EU after, of course, the COVID crisis to support the green and digital transition. But how can this very high political ambition be turned into business opportunity? Christian, please. Yes, thank you very much, Helene, for this question. Um, I think um, to create business opportunities out of these uh, very high and great ambitions, um, I think we need to go not only on the European level, but also uh, regionally and locally, because this is where the buildings are. And usually, apart from uh, some international big players, like we have one in the panel, most of the uh, business related to buildings is very local. So here in this region, in order to create this business, um, uh, we yeah. use an approach which we call um, the sticks, the carrots and the tambourines. So sticks being regulatory, uh, carrots obviously being funding and tambourines being promotion, uh, information, training, awareness raising. And from this long um, application of this process, we now understand we need uh, another thing, which I call um, the skateboard, because that brings speed and that will be innovation. And to bring back uh, the business opportunity, 
uh, we need predictable policies on all level. We need well-designed funding programs that work in real life uh, with a good balance of uh, administrative and requirements and um, possibilities to try out new things. We need, and I think that's my most important lesson, regional innovation ecosystems, where on the very local level, in addition to the high level EU research, uh, players th which are not as high flyers uh, as our Czech colleague here can try out new things and develop further. So um, there has been a lot of help in previous programs, for example, in the last uh, H2020 CSAs, to help us develop such regional innovation ecosystem. And I think there's a lot of findings uh, we can bring back to making this renovation wave happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, we are uh, speaking about uh, uh, business, uh, and I, I mentioned the difficulty in, in uh, the introduction. I, not everyone could listen it. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, speaking about that, I mentioned the difficulty of renovation in existing building. Um, Paul, uh, what opportunities and obstacles do you see for specific renewable technologies to be integrated in new, but especially on refurbished building? Um, I would ask the presenters to stick really to two minutes maximum, three minutes for each answer. Thank you in advance. Uh, just a remark that we are trying to open the question and answer, but you can already put some questions in the chat for the audience. Paul, the floor is yours. Um, thank you. So I see that um, we do not answer to all of the questions. So this, uh, this is um, question two on this one. Um, I would say that for renewables, the technologies are mature. They're widely applied. We have, we have uh, things, but I have three key words I would say that are needed. It's communication. I'm sorry, Paul, we lost you. Paul, we lost you. Okay, uh, we will come back to that. Uh, we'll come to Pavel, if you can hear me, uh, because uh, individuals as a main driver of systemic change, how can research and innovation help to provide these individuals with sustainable and affordable energy solution? Pavel, please. Yes. Um. Uh, yes, I actually agree with the first part of the questions. Uh, I think indeed individuals are the main drivers of systematic change. I agree fully with that. Uh, on the other hand, research and innovation in my, uh, in my consideration will not solve anything by itself. So it's not, it's not about re investing and doing research and innovation and, and believing that that's going to solve anything it, it uh, research and innovation must go hand in hand with with legislation and uh, actually following through the legislation so um, for me it's about rather than focusing on creating new regulations I see large opportunities to in freeing them actually um, on the market so a, a good example would be uh, energy storage here in Czech Republic where I'm from uh, it's almost impossible to place energy storage, uh, small or large. It's still almost log uh, uh, legislatively impossible to place it in a household, in, to place it in a grid. Even though uh, we all agreed in the EU, it should be possible. Uh, we have these huge aims that uh, we are presenting in green, green deals. Uh, the countries are doing uh, different stuff. They're, they're not obliging. Uh, the legislation is lacking behind the, the, the research and in innovation. Uh, so if we don't, if we don't uh, uh, repair that, 
uh, we can we can research and innovate how we want to, but if we can't place it on the market, that's a big problem. So, you know, just ask yourself why the smart meter penetration is uh, so low all, all over the Europe. It's uh, it's their the penetration is very bad actually. Even though we set a name to be a high, uh, maybe it's possible that the en energy status quo actually does not want this technology uh, to be unlocked uh, because it just doesn't fit their business. Maybe ask these questions because I think it's uh, it stands be, uh, it stands above the research and innovation. If there is a pushback from the status quo of of, uh, of big national companies, then uh, we are in big trouble. So um, yes, individuals help, help, but they need to have the means to 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 be actually able to help. That's my answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you are speaking to my heart, really. Uh, I've been fighting since long to say that uh, if we do something which is not welcome by the people, then the people will refuse it. It's not up to the people to adjust to what we propose. It's up to us to propose what the people need. And that's a fully different approach. I remember a very tough discussion I had with the French railways when I was in charge of uh, the rail policy, uh, when they said that people did not understand the system of reservation. And I answered, my dear, if they don't understand, it's that your system is bad. So, uh, and, and of course, people looked at me like an like an UFO, like if I was coming from another planet. So I think yeah. it's a very, very important point you mentioned, as well as the deregulation and as well as uh, Christian for the local approach, which is also critical. Uh, do we have Paul now? Still not. Ha ha ha. Paul, the system hates you. I'm sorry for that. Uh, let's go to another uh, series of questions. Um, Hello, Ellen. So, sorry to, to interrupt to you, to but you. we, we have to... Uh, Paul? We have to... Hello, Ellen. Sorry to interrupt, but we have to go to a, a backup server. I will send uh, the new link to everyone. In a sticky note. In a sticky note. Meaning that I have to reconnect everything? Yeah, indeed. Okay, send. okay, send please with apologizes on the system. I still don't have any key and we're losing time. Okay. Uh, Are you sure we want to switch now? Please, everybody, go. Please, everybody, please, everybody, go to this link. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So, please, I've just put a sticky note on the top of the chat. Please, everyone, click on that link. It will send you to another server. Copy the link. Every city that you want to have the chat. I don't see anything in the chat. I should be at the top. Yeah, it's not in the top. Hmm. In the in the in the presenter. Go to public. Okay, go, go to public. It's okay. a, it's on the public chat. It's on the public chat. Voilà. Okay. okay, now it's I see it. Uh, enter website. No. Yes, but it's not possible to enter webinar. You can go. No. It's not allowing me. The webinar, now it's open. Okay. It's a little slow. Joined by computer. Computer now connect audio. To webinar. Connect to webinar in the top. Continue to webinar. Now the time you post up, you know. Okay. No, we cannot show them. You cannot see nothing. Now it's coming. Loading. Now what? We are with another people. Why do we have some? I don't know. Okay. 
אוקיי? אז נבדוק. Hello. Hello. We are facing problems. We can. We are not connected. Could you please? C'est scandaleux, vraiment scandaleux. Je ne peux pas vous entendre, je ne peux pas vous entendre. J'ai le mic ou pas Oui, vous avez. Ok, so, uh, uh, I hope that people can hear me.
Yes, I can hear you, Helen. Christiane Ecker. Yes, I heard I heard you. Non, je ne sais pas où je suis. Two is many that it doesn't go quickly enough. Non, je ne peux pas. Il m'a bloqué. On m'entend? So, I'm told that you can hear me, uh, except on my computer, I, I'm, I'm out of the system. So, don't ask me. I I'm just would like to say that uh, one of the rules used, one of the things our research innovation used for computers is simply to use the theory of chaos. And I do understand what it means now. <laughs> so, um, on the question of duration, yes, it will take long. And that's why we have to anticipate the future standards. On the, um, on the question of uh, deregulation and legislation, where research must go hand in hand with legislation or deregulation, and with the example of the smart metering. Yes, uh, research and innovation is not only to do technologies, it is also uh, to have, uh, to support the right investment. And I would like some questions and remarks in the chat, please. Because we, as you cannot speak, we have only the chat to speak. So, je vois pas le chat. Speakers. Can we have now some speakers? Can the speakers speak? The panelists. I can try to, okay. to speak. <laughs> Please go on. Uh, would. Uh, 
what issue would you like me to answer on? I would like that you develop a little bit on the regional and local. Yes. So I'm uh, very much involved in this debate about regulation and deregulation. So <laughs> this is something we discuss on an everyday basis, because on the one hand, we need speed in building uh, renovation and in, in the right construction of new buildings. And for that speed, we need uh, the right uh, regulatory framework. And this regulatory framework has to get tighter over time in order to speed up innovation and to lead the way. On the other hand, so this is good regulation. On the other hand, bad regulation is if it uh, hinders innovation entering the market. And I think more analysis on quality of regulatory instruments and what it does on the market would be extremely useful uh, on the ground to guide this process. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, do we have, uh, do we have Paul now? Still not. Pavel. So let's go to Pavel. Um, Pavel, um, could you develop a little bit uh, this issue you you said? Um, do you do you think that we have um, something to do on the side of uh, the uh, link between regulation and the wish of the citizen? Pavel. Okay. Um, in that case, we postpone a little bit this answer. There are many questions now on the technology itself. Um, the, there is a question about the integration of uh, direct renewable heat solution and also the remark that um, the, there are many technologies available and what, is, uh, what are the views of the Commission to support integration of all technologies, for instance, through pilots? Um, still not here, Paul? Okay, um, building that uh, we, uh, on the fact that research and innovation is also providing with a toolbox and then it's up to the momentum and up to the needs to pick up in this toolbox of innovation or solutions. Um, we have only Christian for the time being. So any remark, Christian, based on your experience? Yes, I would like maybe to come back to the question that Irene Di Padua asked about uh, renewable heat, because I think it's a totally underestimated subject in European research. In our region, uh, as I said, 60% uh, of the heating come from renewables. And this is because we use the full spectrum of renewable heat solutions, meaning uh, heat pumps, meaning clean and modern biomass heating, meaning solar thermal, and that goes together with energy efficiency in buildings. I think there is a risk to rely on the full electrification of buildings only, because we will need the electricity for industry, for mobility, and many other uses. So I think um, it is quite obvious from our own example uh, that different heat solutions are required, um, they exist, but they need more research. I miss them in all, in many of the research programs um, and uh, also how these different renewable heat solutions can interact, like uh, how can biomass and heat pumps interact with each other. Uh, so that it would be great. And also these local solutions deliver lo lots of local innovation and local jobs. Okay, I see now that we have finally, Paul. Could you intervene now on technologies or any other points, what you have been following? Please, Paul. We lost again. Pavel? Okay, they made us a very short visit and they will come back again. Um, uh, the life of a moderator is somehow complicated from time to time. 
So um, there was, there were also questions uh, on this uh, eligible cost for the Green Deal coal, which is a very easy question for me. The eligible cost, the Green Deal coal is part of Horizon 2020. So eligible, eligible costs are exactly what is eligible for Horizon 2020, which is now in its last year. So just look at the at the uh, guide for applicants and you get the answer. Um, and uh, um, I would like maybe to continue on the technologies uh, and to insist on uh, uh, to make the link to another issue which may have may be very important. It is how this is going to be funded. Uh, I got the remark once uh, from a member state, or was it an associated country, with, uh, which was saying that uh, to renovate a building, you need uh, some money. And rather often people, a lot of landlords are simply uh, a little bit too old to get good credit conditions. So, uh, Christiane, as you see, or if Paul is here, please intervene. If Pavel is here, please intervene. But Christian, how is your experience locally about the financing? And are there difficulties in finding the money for renovate on the private side? So I think what we need and what we are doing is market segmentation. Because very often uh, an, an important, but maybe not as large group as you may think, those people who cannot really afford, um, they, that blocks the whole debate. So we have done a lot of work and I hope uh, to see this on a wider scale, um, how to segment the different groups on the markets. So the early adopters, those will respond to financial incentives and to support. Then you have the early majorities who can push with a little bit of extra. And then, for example, we are now very hard working on the mid to late adopters and we find that this is a very complex group so these are people who really cannot afford it uh, there's these are people who could afford it but for other reasons don't do it so it has nothing to do with the money but they think it's more complicated um, there is an uh, owner user dilemma uh, so I think uh, it's definitely a case that um, you have to look at who owns the building and who decides about the buildings, because sometimes this can be different groups who benefits from a renovation and from that findings uh, find the right policy uh, support measures to support the right groups with the right measures. Okay, we are going, uh, unfortunately, now close to the end of uh, our session, I mean, our um, half session because we missed a panelist and uh, a lot of questions. Uh, I would really suggest uh, the organizer to uh, either let the chat open for a few moments so that people can put questions. Alternatively, uh, for the participants, I can understand your frustration. Please feel free to send your questions to us. Um, uh, which uh, address? Okay, you can send uh, to uh, me. Uh, we will put my my uh, address in the chat now, my email. Please mention uh, in the title that uh, it is about research and innovation session on renovation. Research and innovation desk session on innovation in the title. So we will be able to make a sampling and to treat all the questions. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for your patience. Uh, I think we have still, despite the difficulties of uh, the connection, um, have uh, grasped com some interesting ideas already, but we miss, of course, the discussion with the audience, which we will try to reorganize at another moment. Uh, I already take on board the issue of regional and local, uh, the fact that uh, the issue of the regulatory frame, the adjustment of the regulatory frame to the real need, the issue of uh, um, uh, technologies and especially uh, technologies targeting buildings and being locally implemented, 
the uh, integration of various solutions and the funding of renovation. With that point, again, thank you very much for your patience. I hope that the other sessions will go better than that. And uh, I would like to wish you a very nice day for today with less connection problems, of course. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>